Greetings, guys and gals, and thank you so much for tuning in to the Films and Pixels podcast, episode three. I'm your host, Afif, and tonight's topics, it's jam-packed. There's a lot really to discuss. I'll be talking about Joss Whedon finally responding to abuse allegations from his time on the Justice League set, plus Ridley Scott on why he turned down a Disney film, Tesla announcing the delay of their Cybertruck vehicle, while I'm going to be reacting to the Moon Knight trailer, as well as reacting to Microsoft making a big acquisition in gaming once and more, and also talking about rumors of Motorola's next flash flagship phone. All right, all right. So anyway, first topic, Joss Whedon recently spoke to Vulture.com. And he finally responded to abuse allegations he's been accused of regarding, you know, his behavior on set when he came to reshoot for the Justice League movie, specifically by actors Ray Fisher and Gal Gadot for the theatrical cut. I think it was just some time after Zack Snyder had to step away for personal reasons. Out of respect, I don't want to get to. So it's been no secret, from not just the two of them, but for many people, including crew members, didn't exactly have a good time, and it wasn't exactly fun. So now that he's finally broken his silence after nearly five years, um, you know, for both of them have been acu- have accused him for his gross, abusive, completely unacceptable behavior. Now, one of the many things is that Gadot claims that. We didn't threaten to make her career miserable. Ouch. As well as, I mean, there's these accusations are not new. So an open letter was published not too long ago during that whole time frame, right? From his ex-wife, Kai Cole, calling him a hypocrite preaching feminist ideals. So there's that. In fact, that was actually published in August 2017. Now also... What's also unfortunate is that both uh, former DC Films co-presidents, Jeff Johns and John Burgs, were also accused of the same allegations mentioned earlier by Ray Fisher. And yes, racism was unfortunately one of them. Now, Whedon did say that um, regarding Godot, when having communications with her regarding her character being too aggressive or scenes that should not have been there, He dared to say English is not her first language and I tend to be annoyingly flowery in my speech. What does that even mean, flowery in my speech? While also, he's also been accused of threatening her by saying, I don't threaten people. Who does that? Okay, then. There was a scene she wanted to cut and we didn't respond that if she wanted to get rid of it, she'd have to tie him to railroad track and do it over his dead body. Wow. Talk about aggressive. Now, look, he is credited for his uh, first two Avengers films, The Avengers and Avengers Age of Ultron, so I understand how he's kind of the right person under difficult circumstances. And yes, I thought it's a bit strange how he was called out for not understanding how superhero movies work. But, I mean, it's not the same as working on an Avengers film, Whereas Justice League film, it's really totally different. It's a different vibe, different cast, different crew, universe, atmosphere, all that. All of a sudden, he pauses filming. And then in front of everyone, not just the cast, but even the crew, he goes, I have never worked with a ruder group of people. Wow. I mean, he literally called everyone rude just because they questioned him. Now, yes, the whole time frame, everything was kind of condensed. So there were 40 days of reshoots happening with a whole new vision and different style management. So the way he kind of operated didn't really give a good vibe. I mean, Zack Snyder did encourage ad libs, which is like, if not in lines used from the script, it's just kind of like not made up, but like improvised. Whereas we didn't expect them to say the lines as written and not in their own ways. Now, Ray Fisher spoke to Whedon on a phone conversation, bothered by how his scenes and role was kind of like reduced. And, you know, like 
if initially they happen as an orig- originally planned, you know, they would have ch- challenged some stereotypes of African American superheroes, right? So we didn't dare to tell him. It feels like I'm taking notes right now, and I don't like taking notes from anybody, not even Robert Downey Jr. Okay. Well, it doesn't hurt to listen to your cast members. I mean, after all, you are collaborating with them on a major motion picture that costs millions of dollars, millions of like maybe 700. I mean, I don't know, like, I don't know exactly how much it costed, but definitely so much goes into it. It's not like something that all the extra special effects and all that didn't go into it. And even thought, and we didn't, by the way, even we didn't thought like, um, you know, he even thought that Fisher was mo- motivated by a malevolent force, a theory of Zack Snyder influencing influencing Fisher to believe that Joss Re- Whedon is a racist liar or something while trying to manufacture a controversy, which, by the way, Whedon really created himself. And even dared to call Fisher a bad actor at Cyborg's plot, making no sense at all. Dude. Now, initially, Snyder did describe his character as the heart of the story. Whereas, like, to Whedon, it didn't make sense. So you can understand and see why, like, everything changed and really didn't vibe well. Warner Media had an internal investigation interviewing 80 witnesses who were part of the whole, um, part of the whole production shoot. And as a result, there was just remedial action, although Whedon was taken off the HBO series The Nevers. And now since then, there's been like a whole back and forth. And I don't have this tweet, but when it did come out, and really he did make himself bad, it's actually funny. Ray Fisher said, oh, now he's in his own endgame now. It's on Twitter. It's kind of like funny how like even till this day, Ray Fisher is not letting it go. And, you know, I don't entirely blame him. And like I mentioned in episode 2, the director's cut on HBO Max is definitely a better movie. And albeit not perfect, despite the light, like the three and a half, four hour runtime. But at least at the end of the day, the movie was filmed as it was intended, and therefore I can live with it. Other than being something I was just totally compromised and changed originally. So I liked the director's cut better. Helping me forget about all that mess that I saw before. So, I mean, it, it's not going to go away. And not to diverge too much, but even cast and crew members when we didn't work on Buffy the Vampire Slayer have come forward with abuse and sexual harassment allegations against him. So, unfortunately, I mean, really, from his own doing, he hasn't made himself a good public figure and you know, that's really his fault more than anything. Okay, to all the guys and gals out there, just gotta let you know if you wanted a cyber truck in the near future, forget about it. Nuh-uh, not happening anytime soon. It's officially delayed. It's not happening at all in 2022. Not going to manufacture until quarter one of 2023. And we just started the new year already. Now, why is that? Why did that just happen? Well, sources close to the situation did tell Reuters the delay is due to Tesla altering some features and functions to the Cybertruck in light of increased competition within the electric pickup market. So, yeah, obviously, Tesla being aware of other vehicles trying to, you know, manufacture innovative vehicles you know with the resources they have to put the kind of technology that is available today into their cars may have influenced their decision for a major delay and you know just like all the other electronic consumer companies and automakers right now around the world there's still an issue of global chip shortages happening and yeah it's not really their fault the whole covid crisis has really had a major effect and how businesses operate, and it's making it very difficult. So it's hard for companies to really work properly, even now in 2022. But hopefully it won't last long. Now, however, the Tesla did say that the cheapest Cybertruck would feature like a Singer motor and a rear wheel drive 
that's at least turning at $39,000, which I know is still hefty, but I mean, you know, if you have the budget, go ahead. I mean, I'm not sure what to say, honestly. Although there are rumors that the model could be dropped as well. I don't know. Um, it's claimed to have a 500 plus miles range and reach 60 miles per hour power in under 2.9 seconds in its uh, top tri-motor configuration so i mean even a hefty fig vehicle like that can be pretty fast as far that's at least to my understanding the flagship tri-motor version can hit like 60 miles uh, from a stop in three seconds so or uh, have a range of more than 500 miles per charge and like be at a co capacity of 14,000 pounds. So, I mean, excuse me, it doesn't sound like if I don't understand it, I'm just reading from the notes I've gathered. <clears throat> but I mean, for something that's powerful and hefty, I mean, it can go pretty fast, pretty quickly, if I'm correct. I don't know, to me, it just looks like the kind of car similar to what we've seen in the Dark Knight trilogy movies directed by Christopher Nolan, if you know what I'm talking about. If you remember those action sequences with Batman and the Batmobile, it just, I don't know, it just looks like one of those cars. Also given from, what's his name, Lucius Fox, played by Morgan Freeman. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, the other Tesla cars, Model 3 and Model Y Tesla cars, are still selling well despite it all. Now, there are still some challenges they're facing for this new Cybertruck vehicle, like trying to properly construct and fit a windshield wiper <clears throat> into its huge window on an angular-looking car. However, pretty soon, by January 26, Elon Musk did promise like a, a roadmap update. I think it, like a live streaming or something. Roadmap update by that time kind of outlining what the company will go through pretty soon so i mean that sounds like pretty good news to at least like you know hold people over uh what's the immediate future of tesla going forward and you know how can the cybertruck vehicles continue to stay in production finally guys and gals i can say with so much excitement and hope that Disney has Disney and Marvel have finally released a trailer for their upcoming Disney Plus series, Moon Knight. Now, let me be frank, I've never heard of this character until recently when Disney had a D23 Expo sometime last year. So, you know, this Moon Knight character is new to me, but I am very interested and excited, also curious at the same time. However, the character by the, by the name of Mark Spector will be played by Oscar Isaac, who, by the way, is taking on a Marvel character for the third time in his acting career. Now, previously, he did play Apocalypse in the 20th Century Fox film, X-Men Apocalypse, in 2016. And he's going to be um, Spider-Man 2099, Miguel Ojeda, in the new Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse Part one and there's going to be a part two i at least i hope i said the title right but he will make an appearance in the spider-man spider-verse movie now the character of mark specter is kind of interesting it seems that the movie is kind of like also yes action but also mixed with psychological thriller and um mystical themes at the same time <clears throat> throughout the trailer he seems to having some strange sleeping disorder he doesn't know the difference between day and day and night and clearly is suffering some insomnia. Since I mentioned day and night, I should I like to say that the actual song by Kid Cudi is the soundtrack to the trailer, and I really thought it fits well, so that was pretty cool. What's strange is that even awake, he can see the nightmares appearing in front of him, like even like some strange creature was gonna, you know, approaching him, and he's like on an elevator. He freaks out. He gets on the floor. But when he, he sees it properly, clearly it's just an old woman just trying to enter the elevator and, and like calls him rude or something. And he doesn't seem to have any control of with, with his powers or what he can do. Obviously, with 
the name of the show, whatever is going on with him, whatever he turns into, only happens at night. So I, again, I thought like to me it sounds like sort of a werewolf theory sort of issue. Now one of the interesting parts of the trailer there's this one shot where he's like driving a car right or trying to get away from a vehicle while driving a car and he notices he has a gun in his hand he's looking at it like all surprised and confused he doesn't know how or why and yeah he's shocked this happens and then like when he seemingly falls down like there's a downward ca camera angle looking at towards him now, I, you know, it's good that, like I was just saying, the soundtrack uh, from, or the actual song from Kid Cudi was selected. It does fit with the theme. I like to also mention a new character from Ethan Hawke. I don't know who Ethan Hawke plays, what's going on, who or what it is. But, I mean, he is kind of interesting and mysterious. He seems to be a leader of a strange cult. So, it's not fully clear yet who it is or what's going on. And there's really this sick killer poster already available online. It looks like the Moonlight character holding like uh, an, an object of a, looking like a moon, you know, up in the sky in the nighttime space or something. Like, I think it's pretty cool. It's pretty sick. You should check it out. And now it is coming and streaming to Disney Plus starting March 30. So, I mean, we're going to have to be patient, but I am definitely excited. For that time, I mean, I do like the poster as well. And, um, yeah, I mean, like, there's really a lot to look forward to. I honestly don't know what to say beyond that. But, I mean, like, for those that's new to the Moon Knight, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm, again, this is new to me, like I said. So, I'm definitely looking forward to what's to come. I almost forgot to mention that he did say... On E, I think I have this uh, video clip. It's on Twitter. Isaac did say it's probably the most badass I ever felt. So, I mean, like, the fact that he's very much looking forward to he and really liked doing the work is good. He'll even speak to Kevin Feige. He gave, like, his ideas and thoughts of, like, what he can do with the character. So, I think that's going to be really cool to see as well. Okay, guys and gals, once again, Microsoft have made major news. And this time, it's another acquisition. Just when you thought that the Bethesda ZeniMax Media deal was final and they wouldn't go buy any more studios, any more game publishing companies, they just did exactly that. News broke that they made an agreement to purchase Activision Blizzard for $68.7 billion dollars i'm gonna say that again just you know to make sense of the whole thing 68.7 billion dollars to officially agree on purchasing activision blizzard while also having um, more publishers like treyarch toys for, for bob and more part of the deal now what this means is that they're gonna have ips under their portfolio like diablo call of duty Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Overwatch, Warcraft, Guitar Hero, Starcraft. And I know I'm missing some. But what's even crazy and wild is that they're going to have uh, platforming icons that were once born on the very first PlayStation 1 console. Crash Bandicoot and Spiral the Dragon now belonging to Xbox. That's still pretty crazy and wild. Though. I mean... I never thought I would see the day when this would happen. Now, although it is, it's not the only change that happened with this new acquisition. Now, news uh, broke as well that I think from the name of, uh, yeah, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella did send an email to his own staff. Basically, it's like I was saying, this whole purchase, but while also announcing that Phil Spencer will now become CEO of Microsoft Gaming. So, big congrats to Phil on the promotion, now being in charge of the Microsoft CEO gaming company. So, um, 
in addition to Treyarch and Toys for Bob, they're going to have uh, Beanox as well, part of the Xbox Gaming Studios. Now, the whole timing is really, uh, you know, to me, uh, a curiosity of sorts. Uh, because, like, as everyone knows, since last July, you know, Activision has been going through a massively major lawsuit that's been filed against them, literally by the state of California, for years of abuse and mixed misconduct and sexual harassment that's been going on within the company for many years overseen by CEO Bobby Kotick who for now unfortunately is going to be staying in the position but don't panic eventually when the whole deal goes through many approvals and so forth he should be out eventually and the culture over there at Activision has been described as like a frat boy college sort of thing so it's not exactly a good sign now since july uh, already 37 employees have been fired from the company and 44 more have received a disciplinary action so many uh, people who have had higher positions you know whether it's manager managerial or of some sort have been fired or been forced to let go now this to me is kind of surprising when looking back, like Microsoft, Sony, and also Nintendo as console manufacturers have publicly expressed disheartened and concern and even some disbelief on the current situation, uh, you know, saying like how the culture that the working culture at Activision has been really hard to believe and just so unexpected. Even Phil Spencer sent a memo to employees saying there are going to be changes to how we deal with them. And so, like, initially what sounded like before was maybe there's going to be a changing re working relationship with Activision to now all of a sudden Microsoft uh, Xbox division now purchasing literally the whole company. And that even includes mobile games like Candy Crush that's still going on. Now, does this mean, like, it's all going to go to the Xbox uh, platforms? Not not entirely. I mean, like, Phil Spencer did address a recent concern, you know, saying that, you know, we're not trying to or we won't exactly take away the games that are actively on Sony, PlayStation, Nintendo platforms as well. Like, I think specifically, at least for now, um, you know, Call of Duty, since, let's face it, at this point, it's almost like an eSports first-person shooting game that's been still releasing every year. So I don't think that'll change. It's sort of similar to when Microsoft purchased Mojang, the creators behind Minecraft. Even today, Minecraft is still being distributed on, um, you know, it's on multi-platform consoles. So like when there was Minecraft Dungeons, you know, it didn't stay on Xbox Windows. It did go to Nintendo, PlayStation, Android, iOS, and so forth. You know, so I think it's going to be the same with Call of Duty as for maybe other games like, I don't know, maybe like Tony Hawk or Diablo, whichever else that's part of their I franchise IPs, maybe even Overwatch. I mean, they also have Overwatch. And so that's a really competitive first person team based shooter. I mean, I'm still expecting it to be multi platform. But then again, when they purchased Bethesda, they made it clear that Starfield, The Elder Scrolls 6, Xbox Windows exclusive, I'm imagining the same thing from now on with any new Fallout game, Doom, Wolfenstein. If they make a sequel to um, The Evil Within, Dishonored. So again, those IPs remain to be seen. A statement was released saying, uh, as a company... Microsoft is committed to our journey for inclusion in every aspect of gaming, among both employees and players. We deeply value individual studio cultures. We also believe that creative success and autom autonomy, autonomy sorry, go hand in hand um, with treating every person with digni dignity and respect. We hold all teams and leaders to this commitment. We're looking forward to extending our culture of proactive inclusion to the great teams across Activision Blizzard. Now, 
it's not exactly a secret that part of the reason they made this purchase is to bring more games to their Game Pass ex- subscription to Xbox and PC. And when this announcement was name was made, uh, now all of a sudden there are 25 million subscribers to the whole Game Pass platform subscription service. So I think just like before with Bethesda, they're trying to add more games to their Game Pass catalog so that's more accessible. And maybe to me, that's part of the reason why there's this uh, small looking Xbox Series S. I mean, personally, I like the design and size and it helps that it's $300, which is literally the same price as the Nintendo Switch LCD model that everyone knows so well. That's very much popular. But I think they just want to make it more accessible so that they get more games to their subscription and gaming platforms that they have. But I mean, when uh, talking about, um, you know, the work culture over there at Activision, I mean, it's going to really take a lot of time and effort to really just clean up the mess because it's, um, you know, it's probably the the ugliest thing I've seen. And they're not really the only ones accused of this sor- sort of toxic culture. I mean, you know, Ubisoft not too long ago have come under fire with reports of sexual harassment. And so already, like, managers or CEOs of the company have had to step down as well. So, you know, I think it remains to be seen, but hopefully in time, they no longer have to deal with this problem of having Bobby Kotick as part of their company. All right, guys and gals, for the final topic today, I quickly want to talk about reports of what seems to be a new phone from Motorola after they already released the Motorola Edge Plus, although there's no official name yet, but there is like a code name, simply known as Frontier. Now, leaks that are online, at least from what I read from AndroidCentral.com, shows that there could be like a 200 megapixel main sensor that's been built by Samsung, at least that's from their technology, while adding to their triple rear camera setup, which obviously, by now is kind of the standard for all smartphone manufacturers. There's going to be like a 50 megapixel ultra wide camera and a 12 megapixel telephoto sensor that's also been made by Sony as well some time ago. Now, however, however, on the front, there's going to be like a 60 megapixel sensor that's been made also by Motorola, at least so that we've seen before on the Motorola Edge X30. Now, in terms of charging, there could be a 125-watt wire charging and at least like 50 watts of wire, wireless charging capabilities, similar to what we've seen on the OnePlus uh, 9 Pro. However, and look, all the information I'm saying is really just based on rumors and leaks, so just take it with a grain of salt. In terms of software, there could be like an Android 12 Plus or excuse me, Android 12, with a 6.67 inch Full HD Plus uh, OLED screen, and could go as fast as 144 hertz refresh rate. So, I mean, that's actually pretty amazing. Now that I think about it, it's literally the same as my Asus Rode Strix uh, uh, laptop. So at that kind of uh, hertz, that's amazing. Now in terms of uh, chip, processing chip and all that it could be po- powered by the snapdragon sm8475 soc chip so it it's believed to be like successor or to be succeeded by the qualcomm snapdragon 8 gen 1 phone so the processing chip is seems all obviously being an upgrade to what's been seen on previous uh, Snapdragon chips. However, in terms of RAM, that which is the good news and most importantly, it could be between like eight gigabytes or 12 gigabytes of RAM. And with 128 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes of internal storage, which is uh, important and still the standard today. Now I do wanna mention when it comes to Snapdragon 8 to Gen 1 SOC chips, there are still very much relevant and being rolled out to smartphones, not just Motorola. So at least that's the good news. Um, 
So while their chips, their new chips, uh, not yet available worldwide, it could come sometime in the near future. And I don't think this new Motorola Frontier phone or whatever it's going to be officially called will be the only one. All right, guys and gals, um, again, thank you so much for watching today's episode. If you like what you saw, comment, say any concerns, please keep the comment section friendly. I will continue to do better. Sorry if I've stuttered from time to time. I will do better as expected. Please follow all the social media channels and all the pages available. I'll put them in the links, just put the links in the description section. Um, don't forget, I will also remember to put my Patreon page as well. So if it's there, look forward to that. And it, once more, really thank you so much. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more episodes. And really good night and have a good week.